Mm -hmm. Dr. Chu, I, I would discern a difference here in terms of how your ethnicity has uh, um, impacted that uh, pursuit of self-development. Because I think in the, in the uh, Korean tradition, and I think it's uh, the Asian tradition, mm -hmm. it, it's the, that, that uh, encouragement to succeed, to study, to you know, become something, to become professional, let's say, is very strong. I mean, there's a, whereas, for example, in the Latino community, in the African-American community, often there is, because of uh, our background, whatever, culture and so on, often there's not that powerful stimulus uh, to do that, especially when you grow up poor in the inner city. But I suspect that in your case, that may have been different. I've heard often Koreans uh, speak about, you know, just the young people particularly of that almost merciless drive to succeed. Can you tell a little bit about that, how yeah. your own culture has That's impacted. interesting. It's the flip side. So yeah. you think, yeah. oh, it's got to be better on the other side of uh -huh. the fence. And, and, you know, there, there are many good things to um, being encouraged to pursue um, higher education and, 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 and stretch yourself a little bit. Um, but sometimes it can become, you know, a harness or a, uh, a yoke mm -hmm. from which you really begin to want to free yourself. And so I think, you know, in some ways it, it was a little bit of both. It was a blessing and it wasn't a blessing um, for me. And um, so like a lot of Korean Americans um, and, and, and Koreans um, in Korea, um, under the influence of society and their, their, their families, they, they pursue education. And in some ways they don't really stay in touch with the gifts that God has given them and their, their calling, their passions, their... Um, they're, they're, um, whatever they're attracted to, um, and, um, and they just keep going on this, on this track that um, takes them further and further away from really what mm -hmm. would give them joy and would meet a deep need in, in, in the world, perhaps. And, um, and so I, I think I was on that, in, in that track in some ways, but as it often is in the case of, of, of God's uh, working in our lives, um, there were a few things that now that I look back on my life um, were sort of threads that kept me maybe veering left and right, but still going overall in, in a direction God had intended for me mm -hmm. to go in. And, and I'll be a little bit more specific. So I, I you know, my family was Catholic, um, is Catholic, and uh, I, that was, God used that in some ways um, to influence me, but, but I, I really didn't have a personal faith, you know, until I was about 10 years old, and then I, I had an encounter with, with Jesus, and it was really through friends of mine that that happened, and in some ways, there was a backlash to my taking that step, mm. you know, make it more personal, um, and, and make a commitment, and my my family, my parents, in some ways, kind of wanted me to back off. Mm -hmm. You know, in some t in some ways, they actually opposed my doing things with, you know, with my friends that would involve, you know, summer camp and and even you know Bible studies and and the like. So um, it wasn't always smooth sailing for me on that front. But one of the things that was instilled in me when I was growing up um, a a as a young Christian was this idea that. You know that the church is universal. That there, that it's bigger than myself. It's bigger than my own little fiefdom, my own sort of uh, personal dreams. Mm -hmm. And that it was, you know, and that there was a sense of call to mission. Um, and I know that word is fraught with all kinds of connotations and and and, and some negative, you know, um, associations. But um, but I wasn't, you know, I, I I had a sense that it was much more than that. And and one of the inklings I had of that was that one of the models that I saw in scripture that really attracted me was the, the tent maker. And, uh, and so I, you know, I, I had a, 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 an attraction to the healing profession. Um, and I was told by my, my friends and my family that they thought I would be a good healer, that, I, that there was something in me they thought that would make me a good physician. But I really sort of went into it more because I thought, okay, this might be a way for me to gain access to people's lives and to and maybe even into environments where someone else who's more overtly going to be a messenger of, of faith would not have access. And so I've always kind of looked at it as a tool, as a conduit, um, and not an end to itself. Um, and uh, what was the turning point for either you or both of you in terms of uh, connecting that um, 
desire to serve and to develop professionally, academically, and uh, then turn that into a more direct way of uh, Christian service and ministry. Because I'm sure there must have been a point in your life when you said, you know, God wants me to do this specifically. And use uh, the other stuff as a background, as a foundation for a specific Christian pursuit. But as a professor, um, I was ministering to my students, and I didn't know that's what it was. Mm. I mean, I would have literally 50 students standing in line waiting for a five-minute talk with Dr. Jordan. Mm. And each one I treated with love and respect and discipline, you know. And so I didn't realize that that was a ministry, what I was giving them, but I, it was the holistic. And many of the children who, who I served were children who maybe was their first-generation college student or uh, they were a long way from home. Uh, they had problems in their life that they needed an adult to talk to that was not their parent. <laughs> and so that, you know, if for someone to do well in science or in math or any career, but especially in, in science or math, that you have to be able to focus. And sometimes you have to deal with those things that are happening in your life. So well, you know, sometimes in these uh, elite <laughs> schools, the loneliness, uh, right. the confusion, the emotional and the isolation. difficulties are huge. Right. And the people are so focused on just uh, the academic Doing development the and uh, that they forget that other side. And right. There's a lot of suffering that goes unnoticed mm -hmm. and untended. And, that doesn't receive the right attention. So yeah, so that's, that was what I was doing. I was spending a lot of time mm. doing that and, and, and keeping up my academic career as well. But what my love was, was taking care of people. And when I had to make the decision, when it was like, either you're going to be a professor or you're going to do ministry, you cannot do both. Or, you know, and, mm. and that's when I made the decision mm. to, um, to follow the ministry track. Did some, some of your own personal experiences uh, you know, your own emotional growth, uh, spiritual development uh, affect that decision and your capacity perhaps to minister to others? I came to MIT as a visiting professor uh, there. A young girl ran down the hall and said, I came to MIT because of you. And I'm like, oh my goodness, that's a great responsibility. You know, and so then right then, this was supposed to be my sabbatical, you know. And so right then it was like, okay, uh, Linda, uh, you, there's, there's, a, there's a responsibility mm -hmm. that you have. So when the ministry part, and, and, and the self-growth, my experience, my experience of, of uh, as an older person going from a professor to a student, it was a humbling experience. And that process of, I, I think for me, what the Divinity School and the School of Public Health did, and working on those simultaneously, was to deal with, to really have a, a broad way of looking at the human conditions, both spiritually and also physically and emotionally, and what the environment does. And that all this knowledge was there, but, but nobody was really you know, there were very few people, and I couldn't say nobody, very few people who are dealing with the issues that keeps this just desperate situation in people's lives. And I know for me, and the only way that you, that I could move away or to see a brighter picture was through God. So it's like, you know, let me help you I see myself as a facilitator, someone to assist someone to get to know Jesus for themselves, to find that path of light for themselves, but to help them on the way as they do that. Dr. Chu, in, in terms of your own uh, involvement in development work, Christian missions and so on, what was that point, that genesis of your own understanding? God is calling me to do this beyond just being a doctor and serving people in that way. Yeah, you know, I, I wish I could put it into one little, you know, package for you. It, it's, it's a, for me, it's been a, a progression. Um, I think part of it is just listening to, you know, your heart. And mm. it's the, the spirit of God um, stirring within you. And it's a voice that does not... Go cannot be sh <laughs> shut down, That's can't right. be stuffed. Um, you know, you, you, you may run away from it, you may try to numb out, whatever, um, but 
God is relentless. He will not let you go. <laughs> and I just wasn't satisfied. I was unhappy. Um, and, I, and by God's grace, I was led uh, to uh, meet people who helped me to um, explore um, and get to know better myself, who God had made me to be, you know, my, my own wounds and what, what, yeah. how that informs who mm -hmm. I am and, and, and what, what God has prepared me to do, as well as where I need, mm -hmm. need healing. Yeah, well, I think that's, a, that's the point that many times, you know, our own uh, journey, personal journey, emotional journey, our own uh, journey of healing makes us uh, much more aware of the fact that uh, our own uh, specific area of work is not enough to make us happy. Mm -hmm. Just as other people are not happy just by being successful in medicine or, or uh, science, scientific research and so on. And all of a sudden we discover that there's a much more organic uh, way to achieve health. And it's not just, you know, having physical health, for mm -hmm. example, having money or success. That you can ha be doing all those things, very constructive life, and yet at the same time be deeply unhappy. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden I think that makes you more aware of the fact, hey, that also translates to other people. How can I then help others in that journey? I think that the healing, and thus a place to heal ministry, a place to heal ministry is not that we think that we have the key to healing. Mm -hmm. We know that the key comes from the Word of God, and the key comes from transfer, transforming the, uh, the, the soul, people transforming their souls and, 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 and submitting it under the power of the Holy Spirit. We know that, but I think that the key um, our ministry was founded based on the fact that there was a, a, a there wasn't a place for me to go when I needed some deep healing, mm. and uh, the church wasn't capable at that time to to deal with it. And so, um, the important thing that I see in this process is that in order for you to be able to help someone um, to find their path and to be that facilitator is that you have to do your own work and that the work is not just in your intellectual capability the the work is not just in your 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 ability to network or to network to other people that the real work goes with allowing the holy spirit to heal and direct you to heal those wounded places in your life and as you go down that pathway of healing that you have an experience mm -hmm. where it, it, it's like a, it, it's a, it's a, a great experience where you can identify, mm -hmm. you know, in other people and, and, and they can connect to that place that you opened up because the Holy Spirit allowed it to open up in you. And then you connect with them and help them down the path. Mm -hmm. And I think that it, it, one of, that's one of the things that, it, that takes time and that takes energy. And that takes people dedicated to seeing themselves.